baby blue, oh baby blue, don't look back, mama's behind you, baby blue, oh baby blue, don't look back, mama's in you. <laughs> You cocksuckers are all gonna die. 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 Sorry, I'm susceptible to demonic possession. Baby Blue is a Tubi original written and directed by Adam Mason and written by Simon Boyce that had something to do with a movie called Songbird. A movie that I meant to check out, heard some good things about, it, and Baby Blue, oh Baby Blue, being a Tubi original, one of three categories, as I talked about in other reviews of Tubi originals. Good, great, surprising, okay, or trinket box, Titanic 666, Sleeping Beauties, and that, you know, and things of that nature. And this one involves a film crew that wants to basically become a new viral sensation, a new sensation, a new sensation. Four friends that get whittled down soon afterwards, and they are trying to figure out what they can do to gain fame. And they decide to go the true crime route and investigate Baby Blue, oh Baby Blue, a man named Bradley. A uh, young boy that murdered a whole lot of people, 32 men and women. Maybe it's possible that it's 64, 32 each, or it's just a collection of men and women equaling 32. They don't establish that, doesn't matter. He was a vicious killer. But then he ended his life on video, and now it's basically a cursed video. It will haunt anybody that watches it. Yes, it's The Grudge, it's The Ring, it's, you know, Pulse, it's One Missed Call, it's a lot of the cursed video stuff or cursed demonic stuff that basically will haunt you till your dying days and will possess you and will kill you and you won't be able to escape it. And from there we have a movie with some characters that range from either eh to pretty goddamn stupid, but... I will say, as far as the three categories, this falls into the first one. This was a bit surprising. I had heard <coughs> from a few people that this was one of the better Tubi originals, and they're right. I'm not going to say it was perfect, but as far as pacing, as far as having some good comedic timing, and understanding gore and understanding you know, how to actually utilize its small budget the best, this one is definitely several cuts above other movies on Tubi. And that's not a knock. This could have been, you know, available for purchase, you know, or rental, and I would have been happy to throw down a few bucks. Uh, Dylan uh, Sprayberry plays Hutch. Hutch, 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 if anybody gets that reference. I love you guys. There's August, or Beans, as his friends call him, <coughs> Cyrus Arnold. And then there's Oliver Cooper, Mo, Mo. And then there's Allie. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce her last name. Um, she plays Alice. And then there's other characters in this. I do want to say uh, one of the standouts whenever he's on screen is Bradley. Um, Bradley, played by Anthony Trapple, who seems to be having a goddamn teetotal blast as the serial killer. Because obviously when you have demonic possession, you're going to see ghosts and stuff like that. And it's demonic possession mixed with <clears throat> serial killer stuff. And it's actually mostly good. I mean, decent to good. I'm not going to say this movie's great. There are a lot of cliches. And some moments where I'm like, you probably shouldn't do that. And, oh, this one character is particularly annoying. And I'm not going to say the acting's all that great. But as far as being, you know, something that I ended up enjoying, yeah, I was actually very happy that I watched this. There are some creepy moments, some familiar tropes. And there is one hilarious scene in a Greek cafe that will be etched in my mind pretty much until the day I die because it was so goddamn goofy. But there are some effective scenes where it's like, okay, you can clearly tell that the director and writers had some, you know, passion that they put into this. Again, cliched, but fun overall. Some scenes like, you shouldn't watch this video, so of course they watch this video and you're like, you probably shouldn't do that. But of course they end up doing that. Because otherwise if they didn't, they wouldn't end up having this, you know, <coughs> found footage movie that really isn't actually a found footage movie. It's like about maybe 30% found footage. And then apparently another camera crew follows them and just watches all this shit happen to them. 
But then it's weird. It's like, we'll cut from found footage to actual, it's, it's bizarre. It's very bizarre. How bizarre, do, 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 do. Every time I look around, there's demonic stuff in my face. We, we, we end up, you know, with something that's mostly effective as far as just a fun little slasher with some demonic stuff in it. Maybe it has a bit of a cop out near the end, but certainly not that bad compared to other 2B stuff. I will be getting in spoilers here, but as far as the performances, not that bad again. Anthony Trappel, pretty good job here. And there we go. So we're getting in spoilers. Three, two, one, and spoilers. Okay. So we start with a um, we start with a police investigation where a young girl has seemingly killed her detective dad. And then she says, baby blue, oh baby blue, does the song and everything I did in the intro. And then kills herself with a pencil saying, see you on the other side. Um, apparently they're big Adele fans. Wait, that's hello from the other side. I couldn't leave if I tried. But then I forgot the rest of the lyrics. So we then go to our crew that they try to do viral videos and they just aren't hitting. They get fired by their agents seemingly. Now they're panicked about what they're going to do. They decide, hey... This Bradley Blue guy, Baby Blue, because he was such a young serial killer, he offed himself um, <coughs> in his mom's attic, and oh my god, he did, I can't believe he would do that, and they end up going down a dark path where this guy, Kelvin, watched this video on Bradley's old phone, yes, a possessed phone, that's where we're going, and the this crew goes to the Redmont, it's at a horizon. Ah ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha ha. And they end up, you know, pretending that they're gonna rent Bradley's old apartment. That's at a whole or Kelvin's old apartment. That's got all this stuff and weirdness and everything. And he has some weird stuff in his uh, particular you know, under the floorboards, bloody stuff and strange things going on. And August is being haunted by this. Him and Hutch decide, hey, let's do this. Let's. If, they, if the other two don't want to do this, JJ and Alice, let's go and do our own thing. And Hutch ends up watching the video, and then let's just say um, things go really, really south. Baby Blue haunts his dreams. <clears throat> Bradley basically says, uh, you can't escape a curse. Haven't you seen the ring? This is not the only reference they make to the ring. They made a couple references to the ring in about ten minutes. And yeah, we're being meta here. I mean, not the worst thing, but it, they went to the well once, and I'm like, you really didn't need to go to the well that quick? And also, you probably shouldn't have gone to the well in general, because I don't really think that line was necessary. And it was like, oh yeah, we're winking at the camera here. Anyway. So, basically, Hutch ends up offing himself. And then they decide to go to Glendale to talk to a man named uh, Manos, the Hands of Sloan. There we go. There's something like a retro view. Manos the Hands of Fate without Rift Tracks or MST. Because I hate myself. Um, let's just say that this guy, uh, Sloan, he was trying to get rid of... I can't call him Manos. Was trying to get um, the demon, you know, was trying to get Baby Blue away from his uh, boyfriend, David, or his husband. Am I actually totally sure? They didn't really delve into the relationship. And... <clears throat> Kelvin bought the phone. <laughs> that was what we did. Pass the curse on. David is chained up in the basement. This crew decides the brilliant idea of what they're going to do. So, because David's eyes are gouged out and his teeth are, he, he will collapse, collapse down on his tongue unless he has a jaws of life in his mouth. It's really weird. Basically, he possesses you is what he's saying. And then they decide the brilliant idea is to set cameras up and see what happens. And then they find out that, oh, he really is getting possessed. <laughs> and then... August is losing it, because August also watched the video, by the way. And they decide, brilliant idea is to get a psychic that they uh, saw great reviews of on Yelp that's cheap. That comes to this Greek cafe to do a reading. So she takes the phone and instantly starts, you know, does a you cocksuckers are all going to die. And sorry, I'm susceptible to demonic possession. Yeah, no shit. Um, <laughs> and that scene... I can't reenact how great that is. You have to see that. It's about 50 minutes into the movie, and it is insanely funny. I was losing it. I was having a great time watching it at that point. And then they find out, um, well, they got to chain up or tie up August in a, uh, a 
hotel because he saw the video, but they didn't. So all of a sudden they decide we're going to go in, uh, to Bradley's old house where the mama and the sister Sadie are still there. The, sa the sister is not doing all that well, has one of her eyes gouged out or one of her eyes is all, you know, milky over. And mama seems pretty determined to serve them milk. And there's a lot of milk all over the place, including in baby bottles. You can probably see where this shit is going. The mama believed that he was innocent <clears throat> and drugs them. Drugs them. Drugs them with milk. And then... <laughs> she's like, oh, the only problem with babies is that they grow up. She's got JJ tied up um, in a... Uh, with a binky in his mouth and he's chained up and she's breastfeeding him. An elderly woman is breastfeeding him and it got really gross here. Sadie is trying to get um, Alice to watch the video. And then the psychic lady basically said, you need to find where his body's buried, take this object, this phone, and drop it in with the, in the grave and then it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. <clears throat> Bradley is talking to August about various serial killers like Gacy and Bundy. Bundy, a yeah, big fat piece of shit. Uh, good old Ernie Ladd. Non-wrestling fans are so deeply confused right now. All this stuff and all, you know, all these killers making their mistake, but I didn't. You're dead, though. You're dead. You got caught. You're dead. So technically, I don't think it worked out the way you thought. And, yeah, JJ, is, JJ gets his foot, you know, <coughs> hacked. So it's up to Alice. Alice has to convince Sadie, I can stop this. And then Sadie's like, yeah, okay, and then freeze her. So I didn't really understand what the hell was going on there. I understand what you're going through. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you were a little girl and you witnessed that stuff. Okay. And then she finds JJ. JJ says, go. <clears throat> Just go. So yeah, the mother then, the elderly mother ends up breastfeeding him. And it's gross. I mean, it's intended to be gross. And then Sadie stabs the mother because she's like, yeah, I finally have had enough of this shit. And then... Alice, who had seen the video because Sadie showed it to her, she is going to hang herself instead of putting the phone in the grave. Well, then JJ has to limp his ass out there, gets in a verbal altercation with Bradley after Bradley had basically tried to convince August or Beans, as it were, in the hotel. Free yourself, kill yourself, I'll possess you, and we'll just do this stuff and whatever. All right. August sort of does stuff, but realizes he can't do it, KOs himself on the sink, and then... You know, Bradley's like, I'm going to possess you, JJ. I'm going to take you up on that roof, and you're going to become a viral sensation. There's only one problem with your plan, and what is that? I never watched your video. He drops it in the grave. Bradley goes, poof. And then that's it. Alice is back. Everybody's fine. Except August uh, or Beans end up uploading the video online. To spread the curse. Yeah, we're getting a Baby Blue 2 electric oogaloo. Baby Blue Galoo. Boy, I really should have gone with that instead. It gets a B. It's not bad. It's not great. I definitely want to see what else the director and the writer, you know, director slash writer and the other writer can do. And the cast. Yeah, the character of August was meant to be a bumbling idiot. Not the actor. I mean the character. And everything else was fine. Even if there were some tropes that it couldn't escape gets a B. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.